afternoon. Once again, I'm Killed a Bit, your host for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch chat. I'm back again with another edition of Let's Play Classic featuring L.A. Noir from Rockstar Games. In the previous episode, LAPD Detective Cole Phelps was demoted to the desk of arson and partnered with Herschel Biggs to investigate a series of house fires that were deliberately caused by, it turns out, the suburban development fund headed by Leland Monroe. They participate in these contests to get people to move out or to get, at the very least, get them out of their homes. But what happens is, is they they come back to nothing. And some families who haven't left, unfortunately, ended up victims burned alive. And Phelps and Biggs are even told by the LAPD to back off of Leland Monroe. So as a result, I get to play as Jack Kelso, who's a private investigator for the California Fire and Life Insurance Company. So this is going to be Gaming Walkthrough Episode number 12 and it's going to be two cases two back-to-back -back cases starting with house of sticks followed by a polite invitation so grab a snack grab a beverage grab whatever it's time for let's play classic la noir here we go House of Sticks. Mr. Kelso? That's what the sign on the door says, miss. And we're off and running with this edition of Let's Play Classic featuring L.A. Noir, episode 12, episode 12, and this case is called House of Sticks. So I get to play as Jack Kelso now. There's no need to come into the office, Ms. Lichtman. If you accept the settlement, all you need to do is sign here. I don't accept the settlement. What do you mean you don't accept? I think you're pushing your luck, lady. This seems to be a ridiculously generous settlement. A $200 policy with a $20,000 payout? You should... I don't want the money. What do you mean you don't want the money? I want you to investigate this case. I feel my friend may have been the victim of foul play. 
Okay. Let me get the case file. There's got to be more in these files. Sounds like your friend took a hell of a fall. Sorry for your loss. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Of course not. Elsa Liekman, eyes green, hair brown, age 30, sex female, jazz singer, beneficiary of Lou Buc Buckwalter's insurance policy. Disputed claim payout. What basis do you have for your claim of foul play? Lou Buckwalter was a craftsman. I don't believe he would have made a roof that would collapse. You want me to reopen this case based on your woman's intuition? That isn't going to happen. Take the money. I've already told you I do not want the money. There's something wrong with that house. Connection to Buckwalter. You and Buckwalter weren't married? No. Then how did you become his beneficiary? We were family friends. You expect me to reopen this case because you come in here walking that walk? Well, I'm not buying it. I think you should tell me what the hell is going on. Do you really want to know? Yes. We were interned together on Ellis Island, resident alien Germans whose parents had been killed by Nazis. Do you see the irony in that, Mr. Kelso? We spent four years there. So the roof collapsed. Accidents happened. What exactly are you trying to achieve here, Miss Lichtman? Exactly what I said. I want that building thoroughly investigated. I'm intrigued, Miss Lichtman. I really am. But you're going to have to give me something if you want me to get involved in this. There is a conspiracy surrounding Elysian Fields and the new houses they are building. I believe your insurance company is involved. That's pretty heady stuff, Miss Lichtman. Flimsy, but heady. I've told you what I know, Mr. Kelso. What are you going to do about it? All right, Miss Lichtman. One final question. Yes? What's your address? Is that the usual? Is there anything usual about this case, Miss Lichtman? The address is on the letter, Mr. Kelso. The address? Not the phone number. Mr. Benson would like to see you in his office, Jack, upstairs. I'll lock you up. You were quite the smart. It's been a year. What's he waiting for? Well, this day was a total waste of makeup. Mr. Benson, you wanted to see me? 
Ah, yes, Jack. I'm just trying out a new putter. I notice Elsa Lickman in the lobby. It's the weirdest thing, Mr. Benson. Call me Curtis, Jack. This is California. Like I said, Curtis, this is a very strange case. How so, Jack? That lady, Elsa Lichtman, is refusing a 20 grand payout. Elsa Lichtman is hardly a lady, Jack. She's a jazz musician. Plays at the Blue Room in Hollywood. She has a fine pair of lungs, now that I think She's of it. She's the beneficiary of this guy, Lou Buckwalter. He was killed in an industrial accident working for Elysian Fields Developments. You know Elysian? I'm familiar with Leland Monroe. We move in similar circles. Well, Miss Lichtman is making some pretty serious accusations. She says the case stinks and that she's a very happened. highly strung girl, Jack. Strung out might be a better way to put it. It's a pretty generous payment, Curtis. I think I should look into it. Is there anything wrong with the paperwork, Kelso? No, there isn't, Mr. Benson. I didn't think so. Pay the case out and get her off our backs. I can't make her take the money, Deal sir. Deal with it, Jack. Do your fucking job. <laughs> Shit. Do I have to do everything? No, sir, you don't. Fine, Jack. Fine. You know I have the greatest confidence in you. Thanks, Mr. Benson. Never get into fights with ugly people. They have nothing to lose. Your car, Mr. Kelso. Thanks, kid. So it looks like a payoff or a bribe. Elysian Field Site, 1118 AM. That's not how my pop taught me to mix it. Someone is cutting corners. Frank Osterman. City of Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety. Order of Demolition. The City of Los Angeles pursuant Bulldozing to Section starting 191, again. Part 1, Subsection A of the California Building Code hereby orders that any building work at the Normandy Avenue subdivision associated with the, the incident of January 28, 1947 be immediately demolished and all building material removed from the site. Notice date, September 22nd, 1947. Leland Monroe, the man with the grin. Looks like he doesn't like to be disappointed. can't be walking around down here. I'm before. Jack Kelso from California Fire and Life. I don't care if you're from the Vatican. Buzz off. I'm investigating the accidental death of a Lou Buckwalter and... You deaf? Do I have to beat on you? Looks like you do. You're a re ah! I came to see the house where Lou Buckwalter died. You were just about to offer to show me the way. It's out the gate and three houses down to the left. Don't know what you're looking for, smart guy. There's nothing there. Then I'll poke around in the rubble. Fine. 
As long as you're out of my sight. I should mention that Jack Kelso is played by Gil McKinney from Mad Men, as most of the actors who are in L.A. Noir were in the TV series Mad Men. Kelso is a private investigator for California. The place falls life. down and then they bulldoze it. What gives here? Because they're obviously covering something up. Didn't you ever hear of germ? Let's try to piece this together. <laughs> That's not right. What are you liquored up? You're a real asshole, you Keystone know. Keystone Films. Who gets their lumber from a film studio? be crippled or dead. Ah! <laughs> the screaming is funny. The screaming is funny. No, I'm not skipping this. <laughs> I just can't help laughing at this. Excuse me. Suck, bitch. This is like the worst part of the world. I don't want to be pursued by a biplane and be pursued by a bullet. Ah! Being bumped off of a bulldozer. How sensational is that? Suck, bitch. terrible at this.
I think I'll probably get this three more times. Jack Kelso, California Fire and Life Investigator. I need an address on the Keystone Film Company. The address is 658 North Wilton Place. Is there anything else? No, thank you, ma'am. 
So we're gonna investigate Keystone Film Company, which from previous episodes has been defunct and out of business. Drivers. Oh, GI is coming back on World War II. But really, it's a money grab. A real estate insurance scam. That's what about the money now. I work for California Fire and Life. I'm looking into an industrial accident. Here? No, not here. The housing development over on Normandy Avenue. So? I found some lumber over there had the Keystone name printed on it. We've been closed since 41. Never quite made the transition to talkies. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund are pulling the place down. Know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Nix. Mind if I take a look around? I'm kind of hungry. If someone was to leave a couple of bucks here, I might wander down the street and get a cup of coffee. Is there a key to the gate? No. The only guys who go in or out are some delivery guys from Elysian Fields. They're working on a housing development over at Wilton and Santa Monica. You'll have to hop it. See what the rich and powerful have to say for themselves. The real should be nearby.
when will the freeway bond be passed on? It still has to be ratified. It takes a long time to raise $3 billion. In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen join forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Up in the Palais de l'Europe, the town of the Social Fluid and Civic Medium Civic 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 In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen join forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning GI. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. He's our latest investor in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Doctor, this is Curtis Benson. He's vice president of the California Fire and Life. I'm pleased to meet you, Doctor. Ray Gordon, editor of the Times. Doctor, District Attorney Don Sandler, and Police Chief Warren. Gentlemen, I am delighted to be in such exalted company. You're making quite a name for yourself, Doctor, amongst the thespian fraternity. I find that those of artistic temperament are often of a fragile mental disposition. It's a short step from miscreant to recidivism, Doctor. Very true. But I think we could all agree that the City of Angels does rather well basking in the reflection of the motion picture industry. Hear, hear. And it's something that every sucker getting off a train at Union Station wants a part of. Gentlemen, we're here to sell the American dream, and Hollywood is our greatest advertiser. So, how is your new development selling, Leland? You cannot throw them up fast enough, Ray. And that's part of the problem, Leland. Washington is receiving steady complaints. There's a clamor for public housing. God damn it, Ray. Public housing is tantamount to communism. Now, that's why we fought this goddamn war. I'm telling you, it's reds via the back door. You can't have it both ways, Leland. The new freeways are being built to service all your developments out in the boondocks. They're all being built with government money. The GI Bill is government money. There's a difference. What difference? The GI money ends up in my pocket. I hope you mean uh, our pockets, Leland. Mm. We're all investors. Of course, Curtis. So, when will the freeway bond be passed on? It still has to be ratified. It takes a long time to raise $3 billion. I need to find a game well or a telephone. Mm. In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen join gets uglier by the man. Operator, think you could put me through to police dispatch? Thanks. Jack Kelso, investigator for California Fire and Life. Can you put me through to Curtis Benson, please? Just a moment, please, Mr. Kelso. Jack, how can I help? Do you know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, Mr. Benson? I've heard of them, Jack. Building new homes for GIs. <clears throat> With green lumber that was used on movie sets. Jack, are you working the Buckwalter case? Mr. Benson? Are you part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Jack, I want you to listen very clearly. Call Miss Lickman. Call her as soon as you hang up. Arrange to see her tonight and get her to agree to the settlement. Do it tonight. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. End of story, Jack. I don't want to hear another word about Elsa Lickman or Luke Buckwalter. Hmm. Can you put me through to Michigan 221? Putting the call through. Hello? Ms. Lichtman, it's Jack Kelso. Yes, Mr. Kelso. I've been looking into your case. Yes, and what have you found? It doesn't look good. I need to see you. Meet me at the Blue Room. I work there tonight. I take a break around 9. I'll be waiting at the stage door. We can talk then. Auf Wiedersehen, Mr. Kelso. Thanks, ma'am. Where's that 
goddamn waitress. Missing some evidence. Legion Field site.
gotta have it. She wants a five star. Goddamn. When is America gonna understand? It's not about getting, it's about giving. I had to restart the case. So I'm gonna take a brief break. <laughs> That's what the sign on the door says, miss. There's no need to come into the office, Miss Lichtman. If you accept the settlement, all you need to do is sign here. I don't accept this. What do you mean you don't accept? I think you're pushing your luck. There's got to be more in these files. Sounds like your friend took a hell of a fall. Sorry for your loss. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Of course not. What basis do you have for your claim of foul play? Lou Buckwalter was a craftsman. I don't believe he would have made a roof that would collapse. You want me to reopen this case based on your woman's intuition? That isn't going to happen. Take the money. I've already told you I do not want the money. There's something wrong with that house. You and Buck Walter weren't married? No. Then how did you become his beneficiary? We were family friends. You expect me to reopen this case because you come in here walking that walk? Well, I'm not buying it. I think you should tell me what the hell is going on. You really want to know? Yes. We were interned together on Ellis Island. Resident alien Germans whose parents had been killed by Nazis. You see the irony in that, Mr. Kelso? We spent four years there. So the roof collapsed. Accidents happened. What exactly are you trying to achieve here, Miss Lichtman? Exactly what I said. I want that building thoroughly investigated. I'm intrigued, Miss Lichtman. I really am. But you're going to have to give me something if you want me to get involved in this. There is a conspiracy surrounding Elysian Fields and the new houses they are building. I believe your insurance company is involved. That's pretty heady stuff, Miss Lichtman. Flimsy, but heady. I've told you what I know, Mr. Kelso. What are you going to do about it? All right, Miss Lichtman. 
One final question. Come on, I'll lock you up. Are we going to the Matango this time? I don't think we're full. But what's mine a year? What's he waiting for? Whatever kind of look you were going for, you missed. A nice thing about egos is they don't talk about other people. Your car, Mr. Kelso. Thanks, kid. That's not how my pop taught me to mix it. Someone is cutting corners. Bulldozing and starting again. Leland Monroe, the man with the grin. Looks like he doesn't like to be disappointed. Hey, you just can't be walking around down here. I'm Jack Kelso from California Fire and Life. I don't care if you're from the Vatican. Buzz off. I'm investigating the accidental death of a Lou Buckwalter and- You deaf? Do I have to beat on you? Looks like you do. <laughs> I came to see the house where Lou Buckwalter died. You were just about to offer to show me the way. It's out the gate and three houses down on the left. Don't know what you're looking for, smart guy. There's nothing there. Then I'll poke around in the rubble. Fine. As long as you're out of my sight. place falls down and then they bulldoze it. What gives here? That's disgusting. Didn't you ever hear of germs? Let's try to piece this together. Take another step this way there's going to be trouble. Keystone Films? Who gets their lumber from a film studio?
the moonshine, but Jack Kelso, California Fire and Life Investigator. I need an address on the Keystone Film Company. The address is... 658 North Wilton Place. Is there anything else? No, thank you, ma'am. Hi, Mac. I work for California Fire and Life. I'm looking into an industrial accident. Here? No, not here. At a housing development over on Normandy Avenue. So? I found some lumber over there had the Keystone name printed on it. We've been closed since 41. Never quite made the transition to talkies. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund are pulling the place down. Know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Nix. Mind if I take a look around? I'm kind of hungry. If someone was to leave a couple of bucks here, I might wander down the street and get a cup of coffee. Is there a key to the gate? No. The only guys who go in or out are some delivery guys from Elysian Fields. They're working on a housing development over at Wilton and Santa Monica. You'll have to hop it. So this is where their lumber comes from? That's one way to keep your costs down. Mm. Too bad it won't support a roof. Okay. Gotta be something else around here. Wonder what's left in the buildings. I'd like to take the time to say that if you are enjoying the content I'm bringing, why not follow me here on Twitch at the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming? as well as YouTube, subscribe for more content such as this. I would greatly appreciate it. Let's see what the rich and powerful have to say for themselves.
The reel should be nearby. telephone. In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen join forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning DI. This is very shady. What do you think, folks? Operator, can you put me through to police dispatch? Putting you through now. This is Jack Kelso, investigator for California Fire and Life. Can you put me through to Curtis Benson, please? Just a moment, please, Mr. Kelso. Jack, how can I help? Do you know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, Mr. Benson? I've heard of them, Jack. Building new homes for GIs with green lumber that was used on movie sets. Jack, are you working the Buckwalter case? Mr. Benson, are you part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Jack, I want you to listen very clearly. Call Miss Lickman. Call her as soon as you hang up. Arrange to see her tonight and get her to agree to the settlement. Do it tonight, do you hear me? Yes, sir. End of story, Jack. I don't want to hear another word about Elsa Lickman or Lou Buckwalter. Can you put me through to Michigan 221? Putting the call through. Hello? Ms. Lichtman, it's Jack Kelso. Yes, Mr. Kelso. I've been looking into your case. Yes, and what have you found? 
It doesn't look good. I need to see you. Meet me at the Blue Room. I work there tonight. I take a break around nine. I'll be waiting at the stage door. We can talk then. Auf Wiedersehen, Mr. Kerso. Thanks. What were you doing with him? I was doing what you asked. I didn't ask you to meet him in an alleyway. Why do you snarl at me? Your friend came to ask me to accept the insurance. He's not my friend, Elsa. I think he's a brave man, and you have placed him in great danger. You've involved him in something, and he has no idea of the risk. Can you live with that, Cole? Elsa, I need his help. And he hates my guts. Forget the past, Cole. He deserves a chance to say no. If he helps you, let it be on his terms. I'll go see him in the morning. This is a tasty burger. Elysian Field site, 9.06 p.m. You lose something, Mac? I thought these private eye types were all wise guys with smart mouths. Looks like the snappy repartee has all dried up. Get on with it. What's your hurry, Mac? You got some place to go? You ever do the cat and mouse routine without a gun in your hand? Now that's more like it. Let's put a few gaps in there. Don't get impatient now. I'll get to each one of you in good time. Time for you to lose some teeth. Don't worry, buddy. I'll let you out quick. 
You're a worn tough guy. You should learn to take a hint. Get him downstairs and into the trunk. Oops. Sure, he turned up all right. He's wishing he didn't. He's in the trunk. He's going nowhere. The boys introduce themselves. <laughs> what do you want done with him, Mr. Monroe? Hmm. Yeah, I know a good place. I pick up a shovel and a pick on the way. It's up in the hills behind Griffith Park. We'll deal with that German bitch next. Sorry, pal. Desperate times. Must be his mind, right? Monroe owns the city. Owns the cops. I need to find Elsa.
So you're still carrying that Army 45, Cole. Who? For God's sake, Cole! Call an ambulance! House of Sticks case report. 11 out of 11 clues found. 3 out of 3 questions correct. The truth is out on Elysian Fields, despite Leland Monroe's best effort to bury it. Well, now, folks, I'm gonna. This is gonna be a brief intermission, but stick around. This is the Nine to Five Outlaw Does Gaming Let's Play Classic, Episode Twelve, featuring L.A. Noir from Rockstar Games. I'll be right back. Don't go away.
Okay, I'm back. In the previous case, I got to play as Jack Kelso, private investigator for the California Fire and Life Insurance Company, only to find out that the Elysian Fields developers responsible for the Suburban Redevelopment Fund are running a scam. In which they prompt, they plan, they said that they were going to provide housing for GIs. But it turns out that they're cutting corners using inferior product and practically building matchstick houses so that they can collect on the insurance. And it's being headed by a guy named Leland Monroe and Curtis Benson, who's Jack Kelso's uh, employer of all people. And members of the LAPD that uh, shrink, that head shrinker, and powerful people are trying to take advantage of this scam. So now, we continue with Let's Play Classic featuring L.A. Noir episode 12, and this is going to be the conclusion case, or at least the conclusion of this episode, and it's called A Polite Invitation. So let's get on with it right now on the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. And it's Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir. Satchel charges on the cave entrance from above. Covering fire on weapons team. Look for snipers in the trees. You know the drill. No risks, no heroes, no prisoners. You want some roast on this one, Sarge? No, you guys have done enough. Head back to Webs. We are going to blow every cave we come across. Close them down and move on, people. Damn. I was hoping to get me a samurai sword. Skipper says that Phelps has fallen behind again. He's got his fire teams checking every cave. He's lost another flamethrower. He wants you to get over there and hurry them along. Hogue Boom, Weapons Company. Sir. Sir. We have a major cave complex in front of us, Hogue Boom. I want flamethrowers and BAR teams to clean it out. Begging your pardon, sir. But if it's a big complex, why don't we bring the Shermans in? They could pour it in there. We can't wait for tanks to be brought up. I'm already behind. Then blow the cave. No skin off our nose. Bury them We in are it. going in there and clearing them out. We are doing it by the numbers, Sergeant. Get your team in place. We're moving out. Mount up! First fire team and flamethrowers, head in! Where's he going? Where's who going? The big cowboy. He's going in. Who gave that order? You did. A polite invitation. Sitting there. Not long, Mr. Kelso. You look lovely, Princess. You haven't exactly caught me at my best. It's okay, Miss Lichtman. I'm a big boy. I know how to take my licks. Please, call me Elsa. Okay, Elsa. What can I do for you? I'd like to explain because I... I can join the dots, Elsa. Cole needs your help, Jack. The police department have frozen him out. Look, you're obviously a brave lady, but you can't fight all Cole's battles for him. I just wanted to apologize for... You don't have to apologize. You were right about Elysian Fields. Tell me something. 
What was Lou Buckwalter's regular job? He was a carpenter. He built sets for Arkeo, Warner Brothers. Set carpenter? Perfect. If you don't mind, Elsa, I'd like to get a little rest now. I've got a lot more dots to join, and it's making my head hurt. That's perfectly understandable, Mr. Jack. I hope we can meet again under less dramatic circumstances. I hope so too, Princess. I'd like that. You Kelso? Who's asking? Peterson, assistant DA. You're in the wrong building, Peterson. This is a hospital. <laughs> a wise guy. Let me tell you a story, Kelso. Can I get the abridged version? My head hurts. You're a funny guy, Jack. What do you want, Peterson? A colorful character mentioned your name. He said that you might know something about... There's a problem with colorful characters, Peterson. First they send you over a drink, then they buy you dinner, then you get a phone call in the middle of the night for a favor. Try rubbing shoulders with some solid citizens. They're the ones you're supposed to protect. You finished, Kelso? For the moment. I'm going to run for DA, Kelso. The current administration stinks. And you want me to help? I'm looking for a DA's investigator. You get a gun and a badge and $120 a month. I get $150 a month now. I'm going after the vice squad, Kelso. It's going to get me elected. I've got something better. How about Leland Monroe? The property developer? You think I fell down the stairs? Hmm. That's something sweet. So once again, I get to play as Jack Kelso in L.A. Noir. Thanks for the patch up, Princess. Might be the only R and R I get for some time. Nice if he had outfits like Cole Phelps. The game does have in-game radio, but since it's licensed music, it's turned off. So there's that. I'm not trying to get any copyright strikes. You know what it is. Otherwise, without music, I'd be bored. Control your car. Uh, 
right there. Yeah, at least it's not you. Count your blessings, sister. <laughs> To go see Curtis Benson, my boss. What's your problem? They call this an apartment. Martin Deco. Must have missed the signage. In the, what do you call it? Or list the names of the people in the apartment units they happen to be in, or to reside in it. Oh, here we go. Number two. Yeah, because he's in deep shit. It's good to see you. You've caught me at a slightly inopportune moment. Can uh, we do this some other time? Back off, Curtis. Move away from the door. Jack, there's no call for that. You're smooth, Curtis. I'll give you that. You try to get me killed and you still manage to be polite about it. Jack, how could you accuse me of having anything to do with that? I want to know all about you and Monroe, Curtis. You give it up or I beat it out of you. Get the fuck out of here, Jack. You're fired. You're fired. Who do you think you are? Get out of town now while you still have the chance. You have no idea what kind of forces you're dealing with here. I guess we've exhausted the passive options. <clears throat> <laughs> Smack them. Sit tight, Curtis. I'm taking a look around. Get all of the stockholders. I need to follow the paper trail. Curtis Rob, Robert Benson. The chance agreement. I knew you were in bed with the Legion, Curtis. What exactly Curtis. do you expect to find, Jack? Now I know why. You and I are going to have a little chat, Mr. Benson. I want answers, Curtis. So pay attention. Please, Jack. I'm not a violent man. No, but you're a greedy, shady man. Curtis Benson, eyes blue, hair gray, age 52, sex male. Vice President of California Fire and Life. Motive for fraud. I don't get it, Curtis. You're Vice President of the company. Why take the risk? It's a simple business transaction, dear boy. You're lying, Curtis. Something happened at the company, didn't it? That's why you took the bribe. Bribe? What bribe? How can you accuse me of benefiting ahead of the company?
I noticed that the share certificates are in your name, Curtis, not the company's. Ah. What did you use as collateral? Those sons of bitches in Sacramento. They passed me over for president. Sent me here because they believed it was a backwater. But they were wrong. Los Angeles will become the capital of the West, not San Francisco. This place will be the city of the 20th century. And I'm going to get my cut, Jack. You're going to jail, Curtis. You and your cronies. We'll see about that, Jack. Suburban redevelopment. Tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. You're talking about the future of Los Angeles. You cannot interfere with these plans. Information, Curtis. Business people who have joined forces to meet the demand for new homes. Oh, really? You're lying, Curtis. They're going to burn those movie sets they call houses, and you're carrying the insurance on them. And how do you prove that, Jack? Because I just saw the insurance agreement on the desk. It says, and it states, insured value certificate made out on Rancho Escondido by California Fire and Life. Rancho Escondido burnt to the ground. California Fire and Life is carrying the paper. Jack, the best result you could get from insurance would be replacement cost. The stakes are much, much higher. Buckwalter case settlement. Why the big payoff in the Buckwalter case? It was bound to bring it to attention. Who could have predicted this particular confluence of events? Elsa Lichtman as the beneficiary who spurns the cash. The brilliant but flawed detective becoming her lover. And you, Jack, taking their bait. You buy green lumber and use it to build houses. How do you expect it to end? Mr. Monroe has a fine reputation for building houses. What would I know about his choice of building materials? Give me what I need or I'll beat it out of you. <laughs> it's all there in the case file. If you know what to look for. Very neat, Curtis. Maybe I can't work it out, but Phelps can. He may be many things, but he is one of the best detectives the LAPD has ever had. What? Your card is marked, Jack. You'll have an unfortunate accident if you don't leave town. Your California isn't the same as mine, Mr. Benson. Not at all. Oh, my goodness. How old are you, princess? Sixteen, mister. Try a different number, kid. How old are you, really? Nearly thirteen. You take love where you can find it as you get older. Love? That has nothing to do with love, Curtis. Some might find your romantic notions endearing, Jack. I find them very tiring. You're finished, Curtis. That remains to be seen, Jack. I haven't told you about my new job, Curtis. DA's investigator. Who do you think the DA reports to, Jack? Well, certainly not to you. Get dressed. You're getting out of here. He's not so bad. He just lays on top of me and grunts for a few minutes. He's kind. Uh, and he buys me nice things. Get dressed. You're leaving. She will only come back. You sick bastard. Take the right out and put a bullet in you. But that's not how I operate. But I don't like how you operate, Curtis Benson. I'm just going up to my office party. 
Gotta check over some files. Take the elevator. First door on the right when you come out. You know the way, Kelso. He's only a writer. He can't really help me. Drunk, I'll bet. Or doped up. We won't even move in together when we're not even married. I like you. People say I have no taste, but I like you. So, Curtis. What is it you don't want me to see? Apologize immediately. 34 degrees, 4 minutes, 29 seconds north. 118 degrees, 17 minutes, 58 seconds west. There's got to be more in these files. Something else in that report. I know it. Insured replacement value for the house is $900. Current value of the house and land is $3,500. Christ, how many of these dumps are we carrying on the books? I have a Detective Phelps of the LAPD here to see you. Mm. Have a seat, Cole. Where's the go-between? She's awful easy on the eye for a foreign girl. Does that private dick patter actually work on anyone, Kelso? It's not your style. You were always a little more direct. This is your dime, officer. Would you have helped me if I asked, Jack? A little chuck on the shoulder, shot of Semprify. Fuck you, Cole. Be a man. Why send a woman to do your dirty work? You're a cop. Why do you want my help? I thought a PI might be a little more discreet. I'm no gumshoe. I used to be an investigator for this company before your investigation got me fired. Sorry to hear that, Jack. I'm sorry about a lot of things. Is that an apology, Cole? It's a feeble attempt at one, yes. Look, Jack, it's a murder case, and I need help to solve it. So what's it got to do with Elysian Fields developments? I ran it somehow. The flyers keep turning up whenever I find a domestic fire. They're boosters. Stiffing GIs for deposits, making them wait months for a throw-up house. They're already making more money than they can count. What's turned them into killers? So you believe me? This is why you dragged me into the Buckwalter case. Look, Jack, I'm sorry. But if not for me, do it for some of the poor saps who are dying. Or some of the leathernecks who are getting grifted. How about it, Jack? I know you, Cole. You're still beating yourself up over that metal on Sugarloaf. The medal you think you didn't deserve, but you just don't get it. 
Nobody deserves a medal. It's just the ridiculous situation you find yourself in and how you react to it. You think you failed up on that hill. But courage isn't a tap you could turn on or off. Courage isn't permanent. It's a tenuous and fickle thing. Courage and cowardice exist in every man. Get over it. You got it off your chest. I guess I have. Can you help me, Jack? I'm thinking about it. The Hall of Records is the place to start. Hall of Records, 1019 AM. So it looks like Cole Phelps and Jack Kelso have both buried the hatchet in the uneasy relationship they've had over the years since World War II and the Battle of Okinawa in Japan. Hello there. You need some help there, sir? The Land Registry Office. Where is it? Just up the stairs. Thanks. In L.A. Noir, anytime you see golden handles, that's where Cole Phelps, or in this case, Jack Kelso, can enter in. I'd like to see the company details of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Certainly, sir. Just this way. I like how the receptionist didn't bother to ask what this is pertaining or be defensive with the information about divulging information. All those suburban sons of bitches ought to be listed in here. Suburban Development Fund, June 22nd, 1945. Here are the names Leland Monroe, Fletcher Baron, Baron, Donald Sandler, William Worrell, he's the chief, Curtis Benson, that's like you bastard. Courtney, for God's sake, what's he got to do with this? I'd like information on a plot of land. Okay, do you have the address? Not exactly. It's a new lot. I have the coordinates. 34 degrees, 4 minutes, 29 seconds north. 118 degrees, 17 minutes, 58 seconds west. All right, that makes it a bit more difficult. Come with me. I believe that is in the Wilshire area. Here. 34 degrees, 4 minutes, 29 seconds north, 118 degrees, 17 minutes, 58 seconds west. The lot number is 1876988. -988. Unfortunately, that is just the beginning. We have at least a million lot numbers in the Los Angeles area. The registrations are in alphabetical order. You need to convert your lot number to a letter. How do I do that? Over here. Use this adding machine. There are 90,000 entries to a book, so divide your lot number by 90,000. 
988. Divided by... 90,000, yes. One million eight hundred seventy six thousand nine hundred and eighty eight divided by ninety thousand. Twenty. A starts at zero, so you want to add one to your number. Twenty one. That number is your letter of the alphabet. Once you have the letter, find the right aisle, and you are in business. You do this every day? See what the site is worth to them. One eight seven six nine eight eight. One eight seven six nine eight eight. The book value is three fifty. With the new home in place, the improved value of the property is thirty five hundred. They can make a killing. How do they pull it off? Oh shit, these assholes again. Know why I plumped for the caddy? The extra trunk space. One thing you learn in the war, boys! You do your talking once the smoke clears! Yeah. Get the hints, do you? Let's see if I can't put one. Up. That's not a prick. Christ, just missed. Work on your aim, jackass. You come up. And it's to the left that you will attack me, boy. Oh, God. That is right. Prick. I 
I need a word, Courtney. That's okay, Jack. You, you didn't need to come all the way down It's here. important, Courtney. How can I help? Tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. What are you talking about? Don't fuck with me, Courtney! Jack, I swear, I don't know what you're talking about. How does your name appear as one of the investors in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? You're out of your mind. I was down at the Hall of Records checking on a property company called Elysian Fields Developments. Their funding comes from the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Seriously, Jack, I have no idea. Your name is there, Courtney, with some pretty interesting company. The mayor, the district attorney, some dirty cops, and your buddy, Dr. Harlan Fontaine. Dr. Fontaine? Spill it, Courtney. I want all of it. Fontaine and the rest. Fontaine took the morphine off our hands. Look, Jack, I know you said to get rid of it, but it's okay. I did something good for once. He reinvested the money for us. That's it. That's what's happening. They're building houses for GIs, Jack. I turned a mistake into something beneficial, something that's going to help out the guys. Courtney, they're building matchstick houses. They're going to burn them for the insurance money. They'll probably stiff the poor bastards for the deposits. Please, Jack. Say it isn't so. Harlan's a doctor. A good one. He helps out a lot of people. Looks like he's helping himself, Courtney. You're the fall guy. Who's asking? Leland Monroe. I was wondering when you'd get around to calling. I'd like to meet with you, Mr. Kelso. I bet you would, Mr. Monroe. But I value my skin highly enough to not want to meet with you. Why don't you just send some more of your boys around and we'll have a nice cup of tea? You realize that I could make you a very wealthy man, Mr. Kelso. Better than $220 a month? I'm going to have to let it slide, Mr. Monroe. Are you haggling with me, Jack? I might be. Come around to my place at 9. 5164 Santa Monica Boulevard. You'll come? I might. Good night, Mr. Monroe. What's less of the six Marines? I appreciate the help, all of you. We can reminisce later. I want a minimum of noise and no prisoners. No prisoners? This isn't Pele Lu, Jack. These guys are grifting GIs. That's what they do for a living. It's okay, Jack. We all feel the same way. It just hasn't turned out quite the way we imagined. Let's get it done. Teams of two at the ready.
Right now! Hold the perimeter. I got personal business with Mr. Leland Monroe. Would you like me to ease your suffering, sir? You can walk out. <laughs> Kids. Keep on going, Jack. You're a very sweet looking girl to be holding such a big gun. I know how to use it, mister. I'm sure you do. So how about pointing it over there in the direction of Hollywood instead of at me, princess? You're quite the wise guy. I don't normally shoot women, princess. How about putting the cannon down? Ah! Oh. He's got his hat back on. <laughs> Silly I didn't day. think you had the guts, sweetheart. Cute, but silly. I was never very good at reading women. Monroe! Where are you, damn it? Catch this asshole! 
Almost out. Need a new weapon. That's gotcha. it. Out of ammo. Gotcha. So this is the home stretch, folks. The end of the stream. Jack Kelso. That's my opening negotiating position. Who oh, you crazy son of a bitch? How did you get in here? I'm bleeding to death. Get me a doctor. I thought I had an invitation, Monroe. Your boys outside were certainly expecting me. That's my second offer. You sadistic bastard. What do you want? I'm going to take a look around, Monroe. Then I want you to tell me what you know about the mayor and those Trojan houses that you're building. <clears throat> Dr. Fontaine, I need to speak with you urgently. Sit down. Please, sit down. Tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. It's the fund we are using to channel money into the development of new houses. Why is my name on the board of managers? Technically, you are a major contributor. Please, Courtney. Those houses are a sham, Doctor. They're going to be burned for the insurance. That's a scandalous allegation, Courtney. Do you have any proof? Jack Kelso? An investigator for California Fire and Light has seen them. He was almost killed when he found out what was going on. I don't know what to say. I feel that I have been duped. Who do you think is behind this subterfuge? Jack says it's a property developer named Monroe. He said it goes all the way to the mayor. You cannot have believed that I was involved. I don't know what to believe anymore, Doctor. I hope that you weren't involved. Thank you for your trust, dear boy. Be still, Courtney. All of your troubles are finally over. Let them go. them drift away what the fuck dr fontaine i need to speak with Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Remind me what they say about absolute power, Monroe. Fuck you, Jack. Ah, call me an ambulance already. I was about to get out of the sink when I came in there. Stole in there. Hmm. Smart. Keep the dirt on Fontaine under lock and key. This is your insurance.
I'm guessing Vincent's portfolio is only a fraction the size of yours, Monroe. That's a hell of a payroll. Some sold up. The others obviously didn't know the links these sons of bitches would go to. It can't be stopped, Council. There's too much money at stake. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, Monroe. Ask the Emperor of Japan. Have some fucking mercy! Operator, put me through to Phelps, arson squad. Yeah, Biggs, it's Jack. I'm at Monroe's. He's in a talkative mood. If you get here in a hurry, you might get something before he bleeds to death. <laughs> Elsa. Thank God. Where? Fontaine. Dead? Former patient. <laughs> so that crazy son of a bitch finally came back for a checkup. It's Monroe. He's raving. You want information, cocksucker. You get me some medical help. I've got to go, Herschel. Monroe's negotiating again. Do you want my final offer, Leland? Tell me how I find the guy who has Elsa. Not Casey. He, he did whatever Fontaine asked. He, he had some kind of power over him. He, he, he did all the fires and, and then he went off the rails. I don't have a fucking name! He worked as a bug sprayer. Get me a goddamn doctor! Bye bye, shithead. Kill some of you, son of a whore! Get me a goddamn doctor! <laughs> Fuck face. Applied invitation. Seven out of seven clues found. Three out of three questions correct. The suburban redevelopment fund has been dismantled. The old fashioned way. It looks like this is going to do it for this edition of Let's Play Classic featuring L.A. Noir on the 9 to 5 All of Those Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. Do me a favor. If you like what you saw and you would like to subscribe, follow me also on Twitch as well as on YouTube as I'll be putting out more Let's Play Classic gaming live stream walkthroughs such as L.A. Noir and Mad Max, which will be later this evening at 6 Eastern Standard Time. And if you would like to contribute to the channel, contribute to me and support me, I do have a Patreon listed in the description as you can see below you. Until then, I'm Kill the Bit for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel, and stay safe.